right there. Welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. My name's Scott Meyer. This is Drawing Together. Happy to be drawing with you today. This is what we're working on, this drawing of the sailboat. Um, before we get to that, though, I want to um, kind of shout out last week's episode. So many amazing drawings from Sergeant's copy. Um, you know, there's actually a, an, an email coming out uh, to artist network that really kind of highlighted that episode and some of the great work you all are doing. So um, I want to thank you all for sharing your work. We saw a really nice response with, with all that work being shared. Um, I enjoyed it. It sounds like you all did as well, and I'm looking forward to doing more of those master copies. Um, so um, if you are new to the show, this is all about us drawing together. So we meet every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern to draw together, uh, working in graphite or charcoal, sometimes pen and ink. I'm going to try to do pen and inks a little bit more. Each week we choose a new topic or new subject that is designed to help us grow in a particular way. So today I'm working with the sailboat. Um, the one thing that is really kind of that really kind of stood out about this image that was um, kind of beneficial for me was practicing with edges. You know, we get these straight edges, we get the water reflections, we got the distant mountains, um, and it can be a challenge to really kind of manage that to maintain a sense of space and structure um, and. I, this is actually a second attempt at this. My first one did not go very well. Um, it, was, it was just really clumsy and heavy. So my second attempt here was to try to make it a little bit more light um, and actually capture the light a little bit more effectively. Effectively. So um, yeah, so that's what we're working on today. <laughs> so um, I'm going to show you the techniques that I'm using. I'll be working with graphite. I have this um, General's um, graphite stick. This is a soft one here. Um, I also have General's graphite pencils. I have the Kimberly, which is a 6B, and then this um, this fine extra black layout pencil. So this is going to get pretty dark, very soft. Um, I have a paper towel and a blending stump that I'll be using to do some smudging and help to kind of push some edge variation there. Um, and my trusty um, eraser here. Oh, I got to get my kneaded eraser. So I have my kneaded eraser and I have my retractable rubber eraser that I have carved down to this chisel tip. If you're looking for the reference image, there's a, a link to it in the description below. You'll also find a link to the show page on artistnetwork.com where you can share your work when you're done because we want to see it. Um, there's also a link I pinned at the top of the chat. Um, you'll find links as well to my book. So if you like some of the techniques and processes here, I have a book that's available for pre-order on Amazon and Barnes & Noble called See, Think, Draw. Uh, and it kind of breaks down some of the, the um, techniques and the steps that we go through when we're making drawing. Because drawing is all about really the decisions we make. Um, you know, how do we move through the process in a strategic way that allows us to really connect with the subject and how you can manipulate the process to better suit your needs. So I'll show you kind of what I go through, but the whole goal is to find your own kind of connection to the process, connection to the materials, and your, your own way of navigating the challenge that drawing presents us. So um, so welcome everybody. I love seeing all the familiar names. Um, I see some comments about last night's Illuminate event, the Rethinking Watercolor with Matthew Bird. So that was from um, paid members of Artist Network. Um, and we're, we'll be doing that as an ongoing series. Uh, each month we'll be illuminating a new artist um, that, uh, that we're bringing on as Artist Network. It, it kind of mixing conversation as well as some demonstration as well. So, all right. Um, I did see a question earlier about some of the paper. Um, and so kind of, again, if you're new, this is all about us drawing together. So share your thoughts, observations, ideas, and questions. So if you have a question about what I'm doing or how other people approach drawing, um, shout that out here. Um, if you type it in all caps, I'm more likely to see it. Um, it, it I, I don't take it as though you're yelling at me, so <laughs> feel free to type, out, type in all caps. Um, if I do miss one of your questions and you really want me to answer, um, please type that again. Sometimes the chat gets going very quickly and I miss a question, so I do my best to try to answer all of them. Um, uh, let's see, okay, so for the paper, this is the uh, Somerset rag paper um, provided by Legion. Um, is, so I like the cotton rag paper, so just a soft quality to it. This is made with recycled cotton that um, uh, makes this really nice smooth surface. There's enough of a tooth to hold the material, um, but there's this kind of velvety quality that I like about it. Um, but I'll be working on graphite, which is generally works on, on really any paper. Um, it's fairly heavy weight as well, so I, I don't know specifically what, what the weight is, so I've forgotten. Um, the, and then uh, uh, Leslie Ladyhawk, um, 
asked a question about demonstrating how I sharpen the pencils. Yeah, I will do that real quick here. Um, I've just got my yellow number two that I'll use, so I have these are already sharpened. Now I prefer to I prefer to sharpen my pencils with a razor blade because I like this this long slope here. I like to be able to expose as much of the core as possible. Um, that just gives me a greater variety of marks, right? So I have this block of graphite that I can use on its side and I can get a really nice broad mark. This allows me to get more of a broad mark. And by using the side of the pencil more, it's constantly refining the tip and so that I can preserve the sharp point for really just the few details that I need. I can cover a broad area very quickly, um, and, but I can also control edges as well. So I'll kind of talk through those, that technique if you haven't seen it. Um, but this is how I sharpen my pencils. Um, it helps to have a sharp blade. Um, this is probably actually a little bit too dull, um, but um, I'm just laying it at a kind of a steep angle here, uh, and I'm pushing with this thumb. I'm not, I'm not pushing with this hand, I'm pushing with this, with this thumb and if anything, pushing back with this a little bit to, um, to provide some resistance there. And I just kind of file it away. Um, if you find that your pencil lead is breaking, it generally has to do with how sharp your blade is. So switch to a sharper blade. I am guilty of that all the time. I'll just get frustrated because I'm breaking the blade over and over, or the, the tip over and over again. And I know in the back of my head I should be replacing the blade, but I just don't and <laughs> I need to get over that. Um, so I get it if, you, if that happens. Um, and then as you get to that, that core, you can see how I'm exposing some of that core. I'm trying to keep that angle very, um, very shallow here. Um, I you know, simply kind of work that core a little bit more and I'm rotating it in my fingers. I'm rotating the, the, the pencil in my fingers as I go. To, uh, to keep rounding it out. Um, and then you can, right now, with this being held at a very shallow angle, it's just taking a, a small amount off. If I'm in a hurry and I need to take off more, I simply rotate this a little bit more and it starts to really take off more material. But that's more likely to kind of break, especially at the end. So I just take my time. I'm just rolling this in my fingers as I go and gradually refining that. Um, now, if you have a piece of sandpaper or something like this, it can be helpful as well. This is a sanding block made by this refine or ref raffiné. Um, and I, I'm just rolling this in my fingers, laying it relatively flat to kind of sharpen that. Um, but again, I, because I use the side of the pencil more than the tip, I don't necessarily worry too much about making it super sharp because as I draw on the side of the pencil, that's also going to be sharpening it. And so I can refine that tip through that process. So, um, oh, Nia gets cut a lot. Oh, yeah, be careful. <laughs> don't get cut. Um, I don't, you know, Nia, I don't know um, about other kind of mechanical um, sharpeners that, that work this way. I know a company named Havel makes like a, um, a, some sort of blade, a, uh, like a, like almost like a plane for woodworking for sharpening pencils, and that might work as well. It's a little bit safer. Um, yeah, so definitely it's something that can be a challenge. All right, so I'm gonna move that away. All right, drawing is all about connecting your mind and your body. It's about using this time to kind of bring yourself into focus by simply engaging with the subject. Um, and it's problem solving. So I, allow, I like to allow my drawing to evolve kind of at the pace of my observations. Um, I also like to warm up a little bit because um, right now my brain is scattered. And I say this pretty much every drawing, but that's, that's so much of how, what drawing does for me. It's about helping me take a breath <laughs> and slow down a little bit. I'm going to adjust the exposure here, so it's a little bit darker, but hopefully that helps. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tone the whole paper. So much of the subject, the scene, is actually about the light, uh, and um, 
by darkening this background, it's going to help me to kind of pull the lights on the, the sail. Where I got into trouble with my initial attempt was that I got too controlled at the beginning, um, and I got really sucked into creating sharp, rigid lines for the boat um, too early. And then, so when I, I took my second attempt and I focused just on kind of first building this loose background um, and kind of easing into it, it, it helped quite a bit. So this, just toning the paper, now I can lighten it up a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit better. Um, more, a little bit more accurate. So that, that bright paper kind of affects the exposure of the camera. Right now, it's, it's pretty blotchy, right? I, didn't have, I haven't done a very good job creating a smooth tone, but that's all right. I'm not worried about that at this point. Um, I'm going to take a second pass, kind of targeting some of these light spots. And I'm really using a light pressure here. I'm holding very far back on this stick. So I'm just using the weight of the pencil or the, the, the block. And it's generally held pretty flat. If I need to put a little bit more pressure on, rather than actually leaning in, what I do is I roll it just a little bit. So I put that stick on edge. And that seems to apply just a little bit more pressure. I want to be mindful about the direction of my marks as well. One of the things in that preparatory drawing that I did was um, I, I was a little um, kind of frustrated at, in the background area, this noticeable um, directionality to those marks. And I want to try to avoid that in this attempt. Uh, again, if you're new, one of the, the key things about this whole series is that this is all about the practice of drawing, not, not the perfection of it. Um, and you know, the idea that you know, we, we give ourselves kind of challenges and subjects to, to grow and, and hopefully develop you know, something that might be applied to, say, a more finished work. So um, what I hope to be able to demonstrate are quote unquote mistakes. I want to I wanna see and to kind of demonstrate some of the, the struggles of drawing uh, a little bit because that's where the growth really comes in. Um, sometimes we get kind of a little self-conscious. I know, I know I do. It was really hard at first putting this out there. But um, this is a very supportive community because it's all about kind of, again, challenging ourselves and being open about the struggles we face as, as artists looking to grow. So I'm putting just a little bit more weight down at the bottom here because this is this whole area is generally dark. Um, I'm going to still use this block. I need to move my pencils over there. My, it's getting caught on my sleeve here. Um, I'm gonna roll that up a little bit more. I'm gonna just kind of rough in the mountains, thinking about the general angle, not about I'm not kind of moving along and kind of inching my way along the the that hillside, I'm trying to break it down into a series of shorter, straighter marks, try to get the overall shape, and then we'll gradually refine that. So I'm using, I'll be using kind of a, an additive and subtractive approach, or really adding here, adding to the, the page, and then we'll be subtracting with the eraser. Change the direction of my mark to, to get some cross hatching. Circular marks help to break up some of the, the directionality as well. And you know, if you're, again, if you're looking for really a nice smooth tone, you can see that you know, I'm building up a lot of light layers and then wiping down in between. I'm letting it build up on my, my hand. I don't know if this is safe. <laughs> I, I should be more careful with my hands as absorbent material. Um, but I am using generally the palm of my hand to kind of smooth things out. Uh, and then looking up at the screen, the, what the screen is capturing is the view from this overhead camera. And the light is reflecting off the surface uh, differently from, to my eyes versus the camera. So I'm seeing um, things a little bit differently in the overhead shot. Um, so it's something to be aware of for yourself as well, especially if you're working on graphite, is that it is a bit more reflective than some other materials, and, and it might be impacting your, uh, your observations of, of your drawing and the, and the marks that you're making. So I try to be mindful of that and try to kind of move around 
you know, test the reflections off the surface a little bit. Um, is hopefully this, the image is coming through sharply for everybody. It looks like it's coming through sharp on my end, um, but I, I know, uh, Christiana, it sounds like it's coming into blurry, blurry for you. Hopefully, hopefully it's not. Um, it looks like it's sharp on, on my screen here. I know some of the, sometimes the movement gets going really fast, and it ha the, sometimes the, the, the live stream struggles kind of keeping up with that movement. So um, I will do my best to try to manage that. So it, so much of the, at this stage, again, is about making multiple passes um, and moving, moving quickly, blending. Actually, I'll use the paper towel here. I've got this one that I've been using for quite a few drawings. And I really like a stage in the drawing process like this that because, again, it helps to connect my mind and my body together just to be making marks. Um, I know for me, at least, I can be a little clumsy at first, you know, so warming up um, is really beneficial. Uh, I, I find that it has more to do with my mindset than anything. Um, but it's, it's, it's incredibly valuable. Uh, so... I'm going to take some time, and it, it can feel it can feel kind of uncomfortable at first to spend so much time in the initial stage just kind of building up tone. But I find that if you set the groundwork effectively, then all the details, like I, when I look at the sailboat, there's so many details in there that I would think could be really exciting. Um, so it's um, the 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 more I focus on that this foundation, though those details come together more effectively. So, um, yeah. Question, please. Do you ever use a proportional, div a proportion, uh, must be a proportional divider to measure key points? I've just started using one. Would I be working towards, uh, should I be working towards freehand drawing? Um, I tend to stay away from should and should not comments. I feel like you should use what works for you. I've never used a proportional divider. I've certainly seen many artists use them. Um, the, the principle of, of them, though, is, is definitely something that is helpful. So understanding how, how proportions work. That's really the key, is, is knowing w why and when correct proportions matter. Um, I'm, I, I kind of vary in my thinking depending on the nature of my practice. So in some... In some subjects, getting correct proportions is, is essential for that skill that I'm trying to develop that day. Um, but there's other times when I'm actively ignoring correct perspective uh, in the service of some other quality. You know, if if art is about capturing the experience, especially if you know, as a plain air painter, primarily it's all about capturing that experience on location. Sometimes getting that those proportions correct is is vital. It's essential to really capturing that scene. Other times it's not, um, and I want to push the boundaries a little bit with how I m manage those proportions. And so, um, you know, I don't necessarily need a proportional divider. I'll use my hands to do that. You do some comparative measuring, and that that gets the job done for me. Um, but if if it's more effective to get the job done for you to use a divider than I go certainly go for it. Um, when when I come down, to, you know, when it comes down to should you or shouldn't you freehand drawing, like that, that's that's entirely up to you. I don't know as if um, there's really any right way or wrong way, um, but what you might find in freehand drawing um, and just kind of going for it without using the divider, um, it can help you identify natural biases that you have. Um, so for example, when I'm working with a portrait, I know I have a tendency to start with the eyes too far apart, start with the eye that's on the right side, the sitter's left eye, too high. That's it's just a bias that I have. I don't know what it is, but there's in, the, in those initial, uh, initial freehand attempts, 
I tend to make those mistakes over and over again. By being aware of it, though, I can move through that more quickly. And using a proportional divider can help you to identify those areas. Um, but when you pair that with the freehand observations, it can just help you in that. Um, and so what I, um, you know, I think what I would tend to lean towards is though is, is making sure whatever tool you're using don't hinder you from creating if you don't have that tool available. So as long as you're drawing, even if you don't have the proportional divider as a, uh, available to you, then that's awesome too. So I like to try out everything. I like using optical devices. I'll use camera. I'll try cameras. I'll try tracing. I'll use um, these like tools like DaVinci Eye app. Um, I do a lot of drawing from life with, you know, just my own observations. I think to me it's all fair game because each of those tools helps me to understand my relationship with the subject in a different way. And that to me, that's ultimately what art is all about. That's my my take on it. So. Um, Again, everybody, I think, has a different relationship with art, so all they can do is share my own and see if that resonates with you. Um, oh, uh, Brenda Brushes, I have a German-made pencil sharpener called a, a KUM, and it gives a similar long lead. I need to check that out. Oh, that's that's very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, if anybody else has you know, tools in particular that um, can be helpful, Shout it out. All right, so you can see that I'm just kind of roughing in that, that hill line. I'm, you know, going back to kind of the idea of proportions, since the main focus of this subject is the sailboat, um, where it's at, the profile of this mountain is less critical for me. You know, if I knew this location more intimately and I really wanted it to be recognized as this location, I think I would spend a little bit more time really refining the proportions of this hillside, but I'm going to kind of ignore that. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to smooth this out a little bit more, bring it up into the sky. You can notice it's, it's quite blotchy. I'm not worried about that at this point. Um, what I found is that, you know, oftentimes... I can get kind of distracted by the perfection of something like this, trying to make a smooth, even tone, and spin my wheels trying to smooth it out um, kind of unnecessarily. So I'm just going to let it sit and come back to smoothing it out a little bit later once I have more context established. Um, but I do want to kind of refine this edge a little bit. I'm going to use the kneaded eraser here because it's a little bit more gentle, a little softer of an edge. Um, so going back to the topic of edge control, I want to push this mountainside back and make a softer edge here against the sharp edges of the sailboat that will be overlapping on top. Um, and this also gives me a chance to kind of smooth things out a little bit, um, kind of refine some of the proportions. Um, So these kind of circular marks work nicely for me. Um, you know, well you can see there's some areas here where you get these dark spots. There was one here. Um, that's just a, a slight variation in the surface of the paper that's holding the material more. And so generally, I can lift that out by just kind of pressing and lifting. So I can, I can kind of tap that, smooth it, tap it, kind of smooth it, and it makes it go away a little bit more. Um, along this hillside, you know, I might come back and sharpen some of those edges depending on where I want to pull some focus. So, um, uh, Kathy is saying, your graphite sticks seem too hard. They're General's Kimberly Extra Smooth. I, th I think that's what I have here. Um, that's too bad. I don't know. Let's see. Here's another one. I can't, it just says General's Graphite. This is, that's the 2B. This is the 4B that I have, so a little bit darker. Um, but if it's an extra smooth, it should be all right. But you might check the, you can have like a smooth graphite that is harder. So if it's like the 2H or something like that, that may be it. Um, it could also be the paper. Um, 
that's one of the things I like about the this cotton rag paper is that it um, it just has a soft quality to it and with a harder material, what it does is it kind of scrapes off a layer on the surface a little bit, but it's a thick enough paper that you can you can bear down on it pretty well. Um, okay, so I'm just eyeballing um, the the proportions here. Again, I, I I'm not sure there's a significant benefit in me really taking time to um, manage the the accurate proportions here. But at this, as a compositional piece, that slope out the side was too steep and that was distracting. Um, there's this foreground hill here. And you can see that uh, how much graphite is really picking up on my fingers is because a lot of the weight, I'm just kind of scraping my thumbnails or my fingernails on the, the surface here. So I'm not getting the oils on the surface, um, but it allows me to control the pressure a little bit more. Um, and I'm gonna kind of indicate this hill here. I'm gonna, I think I really wanna emphasize the atmosphere in this scene versus the um, and kind of the sharpness. Okay, so I'm gonna establish the, the horizon line uh, right now, you can see it's it's a bit wonky. Um, to straighten it out, I'm actually going to use this. Um, I have this paper squared to the bottom edge, and what I'm doing by resting my arm on this edge, I can use that a bit as a guide. I can feel where it's resting on the arm, and I can I can slide across. Just using the side of the pencil. Um, and you can measure that as well um, using the side of the paper. Um, try to, I'm locking my pinky here in the bottom and just kind of scribing that way. Um, taking kind of multiple passes. Still using that graphite stick. And that's a very soft edge there. Okay, so I'm just making some measurements just up from the bottom. And you know, I'm gonna work the, that hillside a little bit more, but I think having it in place is helpful, just helpful just to set the, the groundwork. Um, vignette it a little bit, darken the, the, that edge. Um, so then, and darken over here as well so that I can, again, try to pull the focus into the center. So these circular marks just help make things a little bit more omnidirectional um, so that I don't end up with this, this kind of underlying movement to the marks that, that kind of pull me in that direction. Um, all right, Stephanie just got her shipment from Blick, awesome. Um, let's see. Yes. Oh, and Stephanie's saying, don't forget, close one eye, squint the other, hold your pencil out at arm's length to judge proportions. Yeah, that's a, a very classic technique for um, uh, comparative measuring. That, and I'm glad you for, I, I, it's something that I always mention in the, in the show here is that what I'm doing with my eyes right now, my eyes are out of focus. Everything is out of focus. I'm not squinting. I'm just letting them relax. Um, and I, I think it's a really healthy thing to practice modulating your vision a bit. Um, and so practice squinting, so reducing the amount of light that's coming into your eyes. Practice opening your eyes wide, but relaxing your focus, so you're flooding with light, and then just relaxing as well. Each time you do that, you're going to observe the, the, the contrast a little bit differently. You're going to observe, observe the shape and the, the details. It's eliminating those details, but it's also affecting the contrast. 
Um, and so when I'm working, I'm kind of constantly always doing <laughs> like this. And sometimes it gets a little crazy looking. But it allows me to, especially when painting and comparing color, to see color shifts a little bit more effectively. Um, the other thing that can be helpful is um, the practicing, you know, indirect gaze, the idea of um, if your target is one area, maybe putting some awareness on another area. So as I'm looking at this hillside, for example, and I'm trying to evaluate that, that slope, um, putting some attention to this slope as well. Um, we can, I think at this stage, uh, do some angle sighting. So now that I have this kind of locked in, I can make some adjustments to the angle. So similar to what you were just talking about, Stephanie, if you hold your, your eye out at arm's length um, and you close one eye to give yourself monocular vision, it flattens your depth perception, you can place your, your pencil kind of directly on top of your subject. You could target an angle, say this angle here I'm targeting on the reference. Locking my wrist, carrying it over, placing it on top of the drawing. So what I'm seeing is the overhead shot here so I can actually see the angle vertically and I can compare that to the, um, what, the marks that I've made here and I can and I identify some adjustments that I need to make. Um, again, I, I'm less concerned with the, um, the accuracy in the background, so, but when we get to that sailboat, that's definitely gonna to play a role. And so if you are really trying to lock in those proportions, um, what you might try to do is compare um, the, the height here to other aspects of the drawing. So maybe there's this, you know, I could bring up this, this hillside a little bit more. Um, there, there's some, you know, th there's some shape to that hill that I can capture. And I'm intentionally trying to keep those edges soft. Um, and coming back in to sharpen those edges later, rather than starting with a sharp edge that I have to soften, I'm flipping that, starting with a soft edge that I can then come in and refine further. Um, so you might might check that, that height. Compare that to over here. So this, I'm basically using my fingers as a proportional divider. So maybe finding that height there, comparing that to this distance here. There's that, that landmark. Um, I do like, I like this angle on the reference photo. And I think I, I do want to get that correct. And I think I like that simply because it, it really contrasts that sharp angle of the sailboat. So thinking about it in terms of design and abstraction, um, I think that's the one area that I want to continue to refine. Um, so these are great questions. Thank you, everybody. Um, all right, I have to check out that that pencil sharpener. Um, oh, and then Deanna, it's a really good comment about the. Um, uh, your, Kathy, your, your, your challenge with the graphite, um, they're often not perfectly flat. Um, so I have the benefit of having drawn with this for several drawings, and I've kind of worked out some of those edges. So each side is relatively flat and, and smooth. And you can see this, this one air, edge here as a bit of a camber, because that's the edge that I use to kind of roll up a little bit. Um, and that provides a nice soft transition there. And so I don't have those, those hard edges as much. Um, so what you might try doing is, is on a scrap piece of paper, just kind of working that pencil or the, the stick a little bit on, on all four sides uh, to see what, um, see what it can do for you. Um, thinking about just a, an overall balance in light and dark, so darkening this edge here, darkening over here a little bit. Um, there is some blotchiness he here, again, in the, in the background that I, I want to address, but I'm going to do that later. All right, so now time to, to rough in the subject. Um, so this, this stick has a bit of a sharp edge. You can see it's got that kind of chisel tip. So as I lean this up, it'll give me a bit of a, you know, a bit more control. 
Um, with this tone on the surface, it also, um, it, it's a little bit more gentle to work on. So um, sometimes going for a hard edge, if I were to start with kind of tackling the sailboat right off the, off the, the, the bat, then without any tone underneath, th some of those marks can be real, really hard and then difficult to adjust later. Now that I have, I, I kind of refer to it as seasoning, as I've seasoned the paper a little bit, I can create subsequent marks that I can move around a little bit more easily. So what I want to do is kind of think through general placement of that boat first. Um, and, and I'm intentionally using broad marks. Um, I'm going to refine these edges and sharpen them later. Um, so I'm going to stick with this stick um, and, and first kind of identify the overall placement. And this is kind of aligning with how I'm actually viewing things. My, I, because my eyes are still softly focused, um, I'm trying to think about this really as just an abstract shape. And in doing so, what that's actually doing is combining the shadow shape of the boat with its reflection. I'm not separating that because when you squint your eyes and blur your vision, there's no separation between the shadow of the boat and its reflection there. It's all one shape. So um, if I go in there and I create that division initially, then I have to contend with that and, and actually fight against that later and try to unify them. So I'm going to start from a, a place of unification of the forms and then work on dividing it. Um, I'm going to be a little bit careful as I, as I think about that, the slope of, the, um, of this mast, thinking about that angle more than anything. Um, so by getting some marks, I'm just reacting to it naturally. So when I'm looking at the reference image, that one that you're seeing right below me, um, I'm looking at the reference image, but I'm putting some awareness on what's happening out of my peripheral vision so I can see what's happening on the screen next to it um, and try to estimate that, that shape. Um, so as a kind of a quick gesture, I'm going to kind of drop some marks in. And again, this is... Um, where I'm, I'm practicing the indirect gaze, so I'm uh, where my attention is <laughs> and where I'm looking might actually be two different things. Um, I just find that oftentimes offsetting things a little bit um, can be more accurate. Sometimes when we look directly at something, especially if we have sharp focus, it actually distorts the contrast, it distorts the color, and often the shape as well. Um, and we can arrive at a more accurate understanding of these shapes by looking a little bit offset, look to the left or the right as you're making your observations in the reference. Um, now that's awesome. You're ordering your, your pencil sharpeners uh, I'm seeing here. So, so cool. I, I'm kind of bummed that I can't take the time to look at, check it out right now. Um, okay, so... Um, one of the things I'm going to do here is I have this point of reference. I don't know if I really have placed this properly, um, but I can drop a plumb line down and use that as a guide to evaluate where the, the, the bow of the boat might be. And again, I, I'm just getting myself in the ballpark, and then I'll, I'll refine that later. Um, so one of the things that happens is that with the focal points, we often interpret them as larger than they are um, in the, when compared to the overall proportions of the scene. So um, I'm trying to double check that. And that's why by keeping my gaze soft and out of focus, I'm, I'm trying to take everything in as one as best I can. Uh, and, and I have to say, like, again, my, my initial instinct when I, uh, and I tried it the first time, I was in there really starting to render the boat much earlier than I am right now. And so um, it, I, I'm kind of curious where you're all at, where you naturally 
uh, kind of initiate your drawing. Um, and dropping a, a kind of a plumb line here to help kind of indicate where the bow of the boat should be. It's all very subtle again, um, but um, hopefully it's, it's kind of clear what I'm doing. So that feels a little too steep. So I'm going to angle sight the, the mast. Actually, that's really wild that it's actually not not as steep as, I, I felt like it was leaning too much this way, but when I angle sight it, it's more accurate. Let me try that. I gotta do it with my left hand because <laughs> when I hold my arm out on the, in front of the camera, it distorts things. Okay, it is, it is leaning too much, okay. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. You see how I'm taking multiple stabs it's a very light pressure, so I'll be able to lift off when I, when I need to. Um, this feels a little, a little shallow as well, so I'm just kind of roughing in the overall shape of the, of the boat here, of the sail. And as I start to address the, this sail here, actually, I'm going I'm to fill this in and kind of as a solid shape here. Letting that edge be soft, I'll, I'll come in and refine that even farther. So I'm, I'm kind of relying on this coming together by being able to lift. You know, as I said earlier, there's gonna be kind of additive and subtractive processes in, in what I'm doing here. Um, so hopefully it'll lift. Okay. Um, now what I want to pay, kind of switch my attention to is, um, the, the overall proportions. So I'm going to continue to stick with the sails. Again, I'm keeping these marks intentionally light because I don't have a precise understanding of the proportions of the angles. I have a general understanding, so my marks represent that, that general knowledge, not specific and precise. Um, so what I want to do now is, now that I have kind of a ballpark established, I want to compare the sails. Okay, so what I'm seeing is that, you know, we see these two sails overlap. Um, if I establish that mark here, and there's this slope down here, if I can indicate the starting and end points, I can take that measurement, um, I can compare this width, the, the width of this left-hand sail to what I see of the, the larger right-hand sail. And if, I, if this becomes the kind of the, the, the end point here, then I feel like I'm, I'm kind of in the ballpark here now. So I've got the general proportions. Now I want to compare that to the overall height. So I'll measure that from the base of the sail here. So if I get this this measurement, I get one, two, about two and a half, a little bit, maybe two and thir two and two thirds. And I'm going to compare that to the reference to see where I'm at. So if I could take, I'm taking this measurement here, turning it, measuring one, two, yep, yeah, about two and two thirds. So I think in general. I've got a, the, the proper relationship between width and height. So um, if you're new to that, what I was doing was co what's called comparative measuring. So I, I took this distance here, the width of the sail, um, take that as a standard unit of measurement, and I'm doing this on the, you know, against the, the reference image, turning it on its side now and comparing and noticing that the, the height of the sail is about two and a half to two and two thirds taller than it is than the width of this sail. So 
Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> if not, I, I try to do my best to, to describe it. Um, but if what I'm saying just makes zero sense, then please let me know. Um, so now I have, there's this figure sitting in, sit in there. I'm not going to draw the figure. I'm drawing a placement for the figure. I don't really like that, so I'm going to wipe that down. I think I need to build the back of the boat out a little bit more. And put the figure back a little bit farther. Um, so I, I should also mention that I'm using two reference images. Um, primarily, I'm using the small one that's below me, so it's it's reducing it in size so that I don't get caught up in the details too much. But I do have a larger one here that I'll be using for some of those finer details when I get to that point. Um, but I like the smaller version because it helps me to understand the, the overall proportions more quickly. So still using the graphite stick because it inhibits those, those details, but it also it, it does have that, that edge that I can start to sh use to sh kind of sharpen the, the form a little bit more. And then I can observe that, that shape a little bit more clearly. Um, but I want to also, again, be mindful of the reflected shapes. I want to do them kind of in conjunction with one another. So as I see that figure in there, um, as I see the shape of the back of the boat, the water line is somewhere here in the middle. But I'm going to try to create it as essentially a symmetrical shape. Um, and since this is a reflection here with broken edges, I don't need to worry about it. Kind of sharp edges there. A little bit more definition on the, the bow of the boat. So I need to sharpen that at some point, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm gradually bringing this drawing into focus is what I'm doing. OK, so now I want to think about reflecting this, the shape of the sail a little bit. Um, and, and hopefully by doing this, by conceiving of the shadow form of the boat and the reflection at once, it'll feel more unified. Because um, um, in my experience in the past, when I've, say, drawn the boat or something like this that has a reflection, when I draw that first and then the reflection later, they feel like two different shapes, and it's harder for the brain to really interpret them effectively. So. Um, So some just light suggestions there. Um, uh, Brenda is saying, yeah, the, the hill, it seems to me the hill to the right is lighter than this, the, the right sail, or maybe I'm totally wrong. Yes, it, it, this, it, it will be. So right now, I just have everything kind of blocked in. There is kind of a, a shift in value. What we see is higher contrast in the sail. Um, and so the dark here is darker than the background, but the light is lighter than the background. Um, so that's what's kind of bringing that forward. All right, so now what I'm going to do, you can see that I've totally messed that up. That's okay. I can always lift off some of that again. So um, I don't necessarily need to do that now, but I just wanted to kind of show you that, you know, you can, you can manage smudges as they come up. I might have to I might have to address that again <laughs> since I've I've lifted so much just by resting my hand on it. I'm getting pretty dirty. I love it. Um, okay, so now I have I think I'll pull out the eraser and start working with this. Um, if you need to, do I have a scrap of paper? I do. Um, if you need to, if you want that sharp edge, um, then this is a technique that I use here. Um, rather than a ruler, I just use a strip of paper. Um, first, I want to evaluate the angle, do some angle siding, make sure it's generally where I want it. 
Um, and then I can kind of work my way up to that edge. Now I'm, I'm intentionally using the back side of this because these, these, the first pass is here. I'm just kind of starting to lift. Actually, I could use the, the kneaded eraser to, to lift some material. Um, and, but there's, a, you know, just like using a pencil, I'm kind of working from the, the, the center of the form, working up to the edge. Um, and then there's this, there's this black stripe here on the bottom. And I'm starting with a really light pressure and then gradually leaning in on that. So I'm picking up a lot of graphite on here and it, it may smudge at first, but you can, um, as you lean in and put more pressure on it, then you'll you'll start to lift more more of the material. And there's a I'm going to leave this dark shape here because there's a sh shadow and there's no kind of an opacity to or translucency to the sail, so there's a bit of that shadow coming through. Um, so then if I lift this away, you get a nice sharp edge. All right. So um, and you can see by contrast, you know, this was really messing up. I wasn't. I'm not evaluating contrast when this is in the, you know, <laughs> in play because that's just way too bright. Um, and so, as by contrast, that looks pretty dull. You pop this off, and now all of a sudden the light kind of comes off. So that's the the challenge of value is that we're constantly kind of calibrating and adjusting to the the value relationships um, that we see. So. Uh, so actually what I'm going to do is knock this down a little bit. I've got that sharp edge, and now I can start to get a little bit more variation. If I really lean in on the uh, eraser, I can lift a little bit more to create these, um, these folds in the sail. Kind of feathering up a little bit. I'm trying not to make this edge too sharp. If I do that, what will happen is the viewer will um, interpret that as an in, as a distinct shape that um, rather than an area of kind of shadow on that sail. All right, so then actually I want to adjust this angle here. I'm just going to kind of tap along this edge to locate the edge of that sail. And then if you want to, if you need to use that strip again, I bring out my, um, my pencil here. There's a dark edge along that sail. And I'm going to use the side of the pencil rather than, rather than with a tripod grip. I'm going to use this overhand grip. And I'm making multiple passes, putting pressure at varying points because I want this to feel a little bit more naturally formed. Um, I don't want to be too heavy-handed with it. So hopefully there's just enough separation there that we can, we can visualize the edge of that sail. Um, all right. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a comment here about many years ago in grade school, my art teacher making us tone our paper and then lifting with the eraser. I think that's a great, um, a great thing to learn at a young age to really think and kind of push your observations to think both additively and subtractively, both in positive space and, and negative space. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'll kind of refine this a little bit, smooth that out. Um, and with the blending stump, I can add a little bit of shape to these folds in here, kind of paying attention to this kind of radial quality to the, the, the folds and the 
um, sales there. Actually, I want to... So what, what can really bring an edge to life is variation. So I put in a, a fairly consistent edge along there when I drew, drew that with the, with the pencil. Um, and I can create some variation by you know, lifting in some areas a little bit more like I did in here, letting it, um, you know, let it darken in some other areas. And so constantly changing the value relationship across that edge can be helpful. Um, so I'm going to use my eraser to sharpen this edge just a little bit. So I'm starting with a super light pressure, just kind of blending that background, but using the sharp edge of the eraser to refine the edge of the sail. And then as I, as I come down into here, we're seeing light strike that sail. And now this is not a very hard edge. There's a fold to the fabric. Um, and there's a noticeable contrast between the edge here and the sharp edge here. So I, um, I don't want to be too heavy-handed. Where it seems to be a little bit sharper is in this overlap right in here, uh, where the light cuts behind, cuts behind that foreground sail. So I'm going um, try to try to refine that a little bit, refine the shape of the sail. using the eraser. And I'm just using a light touch with it right now. I'm not trying to lift everything off. I'm just trying to um, kind of sharpen that edge a little bit more. And if you need to, I mean, you can bring in your uh, you know, scrap paper here and, and really, really sharpen that, um, you know, depending on your, your sensibility there. Uh, and the Christiana says, when the drawing is done, do you use fixative? I do not use a fixative, um, not for these drawings, because these are just exercises. Um, so these just get either tacked up to that board behind me or just kind of put in a pile somewhere. Um, but if I, if I did have a drawing that I wanted to um, uh, you know, frame or something, I might use a fixative. Um, but I do like to, to test out different ones. To, and be, I just try to be careful with the overall contrast because sometimes that, that fixative can, can boost the contrast. All right, so I'm just, again, using a very light touch on the eraser to, um, to refine the edge of the sail. And I'm trying to, again, feather out a little bit. So rather than draw a line there, I'm trying to move in and out up to that edge There's that hill that kind of cuts behind it so I can start to, to kind of correct that. And so as, I, as I'm thinking about kind of smoothing out some of these areas as well, um, you know, I'm again using these circular marks. And if there's an area that feels like a little, a little dark, I can lean in a little bit more with the eraser to kind of pick up that, that spot. These blotches here I'll lift a little bit later. So it's really just the weight of the eraser that is um, doing the work right now. And just like when using the pencil, I'm using the side of the eraser, making multiple passes. And as I encroach that edge where I need a little bit more control and more of a defined edge, I lean in on that edge to give me what I need. Um, and then I'm actually going to... And do that down in here as well. So this is I mean, one of the, the opportunities for growth in this exercise is really focusing on pressure control. Um, Again, so if you're new, uh, if you're just joining us, what you're watching is Drawing Together with Artist Network. My name's Scott Meyer. We do this every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We draw together. I'm going to adjust this angle a little bit more. So each week is a new subject. 
Um, we did a master copy last week of Sargent, trying to analyze his mark making and his approach. Um, and we have the sailboat, of course, and then, but we do portraits and landscapes, still lives, all sorts of stuff. Um, so now I need to I need to adjust that a little bit so I can um, can bring bring in the graphite stick again, and then. Actually, what I want to do, this is a relatively sharp edge there. So what I want to do is mask that edge. I'm sharpen that up a little bit. Maybe if I flip this over, I'm going to kind of control that edge a little bit. Um, but I'm not, I'm not drawing a line down there. And I'm doing that on purpose because... Um, when I switch to that tripod grip and I'm engaging the tip of the pencil more, it's really burying it in the paper and it's going to emboss a line. Um, and I find that it it can be a challenge to manage that. Um, what I want is to make sure that it, as a whole, it feels like it's relatively straight, it's got the right angle. Um, but I'm, I want an edge that feels more lifelike. I don't want it to be too sharp by softening the edges a little bit, it helps to convey a sense of light, the idea that light is wrapping around those edges and degrading them to some degree. Um, fine edges are very seductive in, in work, um, and so if you, you know, if that's your sensibility, go for it, you know, that's, but I just want to articulate my own, and, you know, I've certainly done lots of work where it was all about creating really sharp edges, and I think I'm just at the point in my, in my practice where I'm really enjoying, um, edge variation and things like that. So, all right. So I'm going to kind of refine this edge a little bit farther using, now I'm just kind of switching to this tripod grip to give myself a little bit more control and precision, but I'm really still trying to engage the side of it a bit more. Um, and kind of just kind of working my way down that edge, evaluating working down a little bit farther, trying to create some variation along that edge. And, and trying to observe the, you know, the, the shape of the sail is really interesting because it's not, it's, not it's not a perfect angle. I think I rounded it out a little bit too much up here. If I, you know, if I did that, then I can flatten it out by just cutting into it a little bit more. and kind of work that edge back and forth. And if I had scribed a line and really kind of mapped out the placement of the sail, I wouldn't really be able to do that quite as effectively. Um, so uh, having the toned background helps me, it, it helps to, to kind of adjust and move some of those marks. Um, and uh, and then I can, I can keep playing around with that the shape until I get what I want rather than having the pressure to get it right right out of the gate, I can give myself a time to, to really sit with the form and understand it more deeply um, before, I, before I commit to really refining that shape the way it should be. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's entirely possible that everything I'm saying is gibberish, so <laughs> if it is, let me know. Um, so I hope everybody else's drawing is going well. Um, so far, I'm relatively happy with how this is coming out. Um, one thing I'm also have I also have in the back of my head is that I have a darker graphite that in my back pocket or in front of me that um, I can use to to enrich the darks in some of these areas. So um, again, I'm not settling in on on accurate values at this point. I'm I'm going to continue to adjust. What I want to do now, though, is. Um, really get this sail figured out. So I kind of smooth things out. So I still see the ghost of that hill line there that to contend with. So what I'm going to do is actually fill that in, try to make that feel like a solid shape, try to get rid of that, that transition there. Let me see what happens if I take this. And then, 
and there's and there are these dark spots um, here in the sail that I want to try to observe the shadow shapes. He's in the side of the pencil. Because those aren't super sharp edges, and I can refine those edges with my eraser. So this is going to affect our interpretation of the overall values, because now that we're adding in the darker mark in here, it's going to change how we observe these values back in here. Um, there are these cool marks here. I'm going to ignore those for now, though. Um, there are these little, looks like they're kind of areas where the sail is reinforced, get a little bit darker in there. And then down here in the bottom corner, it gets a little bit darker. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sharpen this edge a little bit with the eraser. Again, super light touch. Um, you know, I, I kind of, to some degree, I, I don't mind a little halo there. But if you're feeling like there's too much of a, like, a light halo, then try to feather this out a little bit more. Again, just using the weight of the eraser, these circular marks help to kind of smooth things out. So now I can get in here and I can start to actually need to adjust this a little bit. I need to bring this up here didn't really get the shape of that that bottom trim of the sail there correct okay so now I can come back in with my eraser again starting with a lighter touch I'm trying to observe the um, the shape of light that I'm seeing um, I'm going to try to move quickly through this, um, not get bogged down in the details too much. And then what I'm, what I'm going to do here is try to de determine where the harder edges are. Um, this area here, it's kind of translucent, but it definitely gets brighter here and here. So I'm going to actually start by kind of averaging out that light. And again, just using the side of the eraser, you see how much graphite that's picking up. So it's doing a lot of smudging right now. Um, and it, when that, that's good. I'm, it allows me to sneak up on the values a little bit more. And then I'm, I'm going to try to observe the direction of the folds. You know, we have this big one that comes down the, the center of this. But then as we move down here, they have a kind of a, a radiating quality out from that corner. And there's a vertical one here. So kind of moving all over. Um, Right now it looks a little, a little clumsy because it's so close in value to that background, but watch what happens when you do this. So again, using the side of the eraser where the light is stronger, just kind of bearing down a little bit more. Um, sometimes leaning in on this, leaning in on that corner to put a little bit more pressure. Pull out the light here. All right. Um, yep, 
Um, hope everybody is doing well. If you're drawing along, how's it going for you? Anything I can help with? Or anybody else can help with? Yeah, so much you can achieve by just using the, the side of these materials. Um, I know for me, there was you know, a long time I just, I, you know, I started drawing using the, the tip of the pencil, I think as, as so many of us do, and it took me a little while to get over that. Um, and now I find that I really like the versatility of you know, being able to use the side of things, the edges, rather than the tip. Um, Um, there, so I'm just, as I move through here, you can see like these wrinkles in the fabric that I'm suggesting just by kind of tapping, creating more of an irregular mark. Um, and then one of the things that's going to also be able to, you know, help this all come to life is when I go even darker with some of these marks. Uh, right now, every, everything's kind of calibrated to this, this dark range here. When we go even darker, you're going to see uh, see a shift in how we interpret some of these things. Um, Leslie, I hope you're not stressing too much. But I get it. I certainly get it. Okay. Whew. Okay, I'm back to this pencil now. What do I need to do? Actually, I'm going to lift, just press and lift with a kneaded eraser in this area to pull off a little bit more light. I think I can do that in here as well. Um, and actually, I'll add a little bit more texture to this portion of the sail. In particular, paying attention to where that hill line used to be, and you could see that transparent edge. I just want to make sure there's no kind of ghostly remnants of that initial hill line. Okay. Um, all right, Tom, you're welcome. Um, Stephanie's saying, use the lines on the sail as contour lines to give reason to light and shadow. You know, me and Turner, <laughs> yeah, Turner, awesome. Um, Turner is an artist that I, I came to appreciate much later than I wish I had. Um, and I, I don't know why, there wasn't really any logic to why I, I just, I would look at Turner and I wasn't really connecting with it, but then I, one day I just looked at you know, one of his paintings, and I'm like, holy smokes, I get it, just the energy, the light, oh my god, okay, so I just, using the, the kind of chiseled edge of the um, eraser, you know, it's a pretty tight space, so if you don't quite have enough room, you can kind of lean in on the corner of the eraser a little bit, but you can kind of generally kind of just give it a little vibration there, and it'll lift, and if it's a little too long, I can come back in and refine that even farther, um, and now I want to kind of refine that edge. I'm going to lift in the background, just like I did on the hillside here. I'm going to, I'm going to try to find that, that, uh, um, the bow of the boat kind of into the reflection. As I, as I move down into the water area, I can shift my the direction of my marks to this horizontal to, to suggest the, the waves in the water. So very light, because I don't want to lift off too much, and if I, if I do too much, I can drop that down. But I do kind of like a, a, a kind of a, a sense of, of lightning as of the values as it wraps around the bow of the boat. Um, and then I can sharpen that edge with the other pencil, that's what I need to do. So now I can kind of sharpen this edge, kind of moving in and out, back and forth, 
away from the edge, up to the edge. And actually, I want to carve that down a little bit. And what's nice about the, the way this boat is being lit is that there's a bit of a halo around there. So I'm actually going to find the shape of the boat using the eraser and just with a light touch. Um, and if it, if it feels like too much, I can always kind of darken that edge a little bit. But, um, you know, I feel like it, it's going to kind of read as kind of haloed light a little bit if I, um, if I do this. light striking in that, um, that life preserver thing. So I'm just working my way around the contour of the, the boat and the, the reflection there. And there's this buoy. <laughs> kind of just making squigglier marks in, when I'm in the in the water. That's not the most precise term. Squigglier marks. But I hope it, I hope it makes sense. Um, see. I just want to try to map out that water line. Um, so now that I've kind of mapped out the shape of the boat with the eraser, I can refine a little bit more. So what I'm going to try to do is actually smooth it out a little bit. Um, so using the blending stump, Kind of push it around, smooth out some of the, the darker spots. Um, and I know I'm going to come back in with a darker material to get some of those, those details in there. Um, and really try to describe that boat in the shadow. But I first want to kind of refine the overall shadow shape. Um, and then I need to lift a little bit here. So just kind of working the edge, both additively and subtractively around that figure. I can add a little bit more specificity to that form, but with the figure, I'm trying not to draw a person. I'm just trying to get that overall shape right, because when I try to draw a person, that messes with my head, and I start to draw things that aren't there, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to switch to. So this is a, a kind of a good example of lighting when I, because of where I'm situated here, the light is really reflecting off of this, and it looks like I'm making no marks. But when I look up in the screen, I can see that I'm actually having an impact on some of these forms. Um, I'm going to switch to this overhand grip, and to help define that shadow shape, there's, it's just this kind of short kind of rocking motion with the, with the side of the pencil. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Um, and really just leaning in on the, the, um, the kind of horizontal quality of those reflections. Actually, I think what I need to do is, before I get a little bit far too far, I'm going to lift off some of the, the light that's reflected in there. So when I'm doing this, I'm also kind of double checking, make sure I'm kind of working in the correct spot that, you know, as I put this highlight in there, that it correlates with this one, and that we have the sail here, 
that correlates with that, um, that with the sail above it. And the shadow shape aligns. And it's just, it's really got to mostly just be rough. It doesn't, you know, it's not a super precise edge. So it's just these horizontal kind of vibrations to the overall form. And I'm doing the same thing here, but just a lighter pressure so that I create that contrast. Um, and I should say that, I mean, a lot of this sensibility for drawing um, comes out of, you know, how I would approach this as a painting. Um, and so that may, you know, that may influence how, you know, like my approach could be different than yours. Um, So just with the kneaded eraser, super light pressure to blend a little bit, create a softer transition. This is taking a bit more focus than I anticipated. So I'm getting a little out of breath. <laughs> um, yes, it, Mad Moments Go said it looks like a foggy day and you're drawing. It totally does. So I'm going to hopefully sharpen up in some areas to reduce the amount of fog. So it's starting in fog, and then my intention is to kind of pull it out of the fog as we, as we go along. Um, okay, so now if I bring out the, my darker pencil, I can lean in on it a bit more. So finding those, those darker edges, I'm going to use the side of the pencil again. Um, we're going to save the, the fine point for later on when I, if I need it. So just taking a few marks, evaluating, moving on. I need to switch my grip here just to kind of get into that spot. Um, just a few little notes that can help to indicate some of the finer details like this railing here give a little bit of form to the those high lit areas I'm going to uh, darken this a little bit here all right I don't think high lit's a word but I just said it so now it is All right, um, so I'm going to keep going with this, maybe darken this up a little bit more. Um, here, you know, open that sky area. Um, you know, trying to light, let the, the light wrap around the form a little bit, but there are some areas where I can really sharpen that edge, and that will address that, that foggy quality that you're talking about mad moments ago. So, um, Uh, Mariana Wood, when I pencil draw, I feel like I just hum the tune. I look at your work process and see that the whole orchestra sounds like, wow, that's a, uh, that's a cool observation. <laughs> I, I dig it. Um, I have to think about that a little bit. Um, I'm glad that it, glad it's working for you. To me, like, it's all about the, the mental aspect of it. That's the power in drawing is that marks are thoughts um, that, um, you know, every mark we make originates as a thought, whether it's something that's conscious or subconscious. Um, but it, you know, it helps us to reveal things that, um, about how we engage with the subject 
All right, so I just kind of eyeballed the placement of those these dark marks. Um, you might want to take the time to measure it. What you, what you might do is start with the outer ones, so the bottom and the top ones, and then try to space out the ones in between. So if you're having trouble getting that spacing correct, um, so as I, I'm going to come through here and kind of sharpen up the edge, darken it in some areas, but not over the whole thing. And how it, what I want to do is really try to kind of sneak up on those edges a little bit. Um, and you know, keep sharpening, but find that balance where I feel like I've sharpened enough. I don't need to do any more. Um, I do want to kind of, let me see, I might need to lighten this up a little bit more. So this, the kneaded eraser is really an effective tool for that. I can just kind of press, tap, and press. And I'm going to start on this side because we have this relationship of kind of lighter to darker, light, dark, light, dark, right? So um, that's really what I'm thinking about is that, that general relationship. And then um, if it feels too disconnected, if this feels too much lighter than that, then I oh, will go back in and, and lighten up this side. So I'm just using the weight of the kneaded eraser to smudge more than anything and just press a little bit more to lift. Um, now that gives me a little bit more contrast. If that's too dull, I can use the kneaded or too kind of fuzzy of an edge. I can use the, knead, the rubber eraser to sh sharpen that. Those are clumsy words there, I apologize. sharpen this point in here. Um, and what, what's really kind of a, a fun experiment is to, as you're, you're building, if you're building a drawing like this, you're kind of starting atmospheric and then gradually refining, is to see how much you can get away with, right? So, um, you know, when you, when you add just a, a kind of a fine point in one area, what does that do? Does it fill in missing information? Um, it's something that I see in and a lot of great artists' works is, I mean, kind of thinking about Sargent, for example, he would do that. Like, um, you realize that um, in so much of the work is actually out of focus. You know, it's really got these soft edges, and it's, it's very strategic in where the focus is brought, and it makes everything feel like it comes together. Um, let's see. Darken that. Maybe lift off a little bit more down on this side. So it's kind of fun to see, like, well, what happens if I just add like kind of a sharp point, say in the corner here, um, or you know, a fine line like right in here? Does it make it? Does it make other areas of the drawing feel more? in focus than they actually are. And I can do kind of quick flicks to suggest these fine ropes. And then here in the boat, there's some really nice structure. if it's really showing up. Let me see if I adjust. There. That's a little bit better. And there's this dark line here. What I may have to, I'm going to use my, my finger here to lift off some of the graphite. I think I had gone a little bit too dark with the boat. So now I can have it a little bit more contrast by using this darker pencil. I lost that, that 
fight there. Kind of suggesting these windows. I'm not going to be super precise, but this is an area where you know you can really sit with this and add as much or as little detail as you really want to. Um, so again, I can kind of lift, I, just with a, a finger, I'm lifting off some of the graphite and creating a little bit more um, contrast. Kind of lighten that, that buoy a little bit. And then there's buoys down here. Uh, they have these dark marks on top and bottom, so I'm just going to start with that first. Uh, see what that suggests, and then kind of start to fill in a little bit more information. Um, I don't, again, I don't know how much more I want to do in terms of those details, so we'll, I might come back to that a little bit later. And there's this dark band along the bottom of the boat where it meets the water. And darken that bow a little bit. feather that out, get a little bit more contrast, a little more structure to the boat. And there's another fine line that kind of comes through here. Um, oh, Deanne, that sounds awesome. Using blue sketch paper, a little challenging, getting the shading right, but loving it. That's awesome. I can't wait to see it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's, yeah. Mariana's saying, or even using a blue pastel paper and keeping the, the, the dull chroma feature, the lights. Blows my mind to see how it's showing the wind of the fabric with light. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm glad this is working out okay for you. Um, I do think tinted paper, I, I actually tried an initial attempt on toned paper, um, but it was larger, and I, it was not working out well. So I switched to this. Um, but I do think this this uh, would work out really well on tone paper and pulling out some of those light highlights. Um, let's see, this is really blown out. Uh, part of that's just the light. Ooh, yikes, what did I do there? Um, okay, so now we're just kind of at the refining stages. Uh, let me adjust the... Um, Let me adjust this a little bit more there. Um, gotta grab my kneaded eraser that I dropped. I think that's a little bit, a little bit better. All right. So now what I want to do is, I feel like it. Right now, this is all kind of distracting. So the background is too soft. And so as you saw, I kind of started with the softer edges, but I'm gonna now refine it a little bit more. So I'm using the harder eraser to kind of cut back into it. Um, not everywhere, so it's not a, a consistent edge across the whole thing, but I think I do need to give it a little bit more definition. Let me sharpen that up just a little bit. And I'm just trying to vary the marks because, I, again, I want to avoid a really hard, consistent edge along there because that'll, that'll advance it in a way that um, could affect the overall composition. So I don't want to do that. So I'm varying the marks as much as possible. And I do think I want to kind of refine this a little bit more. Maybe call just a little bit of attention to this distant hill because there's something about that dialogue between the shape of that hill and the, 
the shape of the sailboat that I really enjoy. So I can indicate that by giving a little bit more attention to it. I'm gonna smooth it out. So now I wanna find out where the, where it's getting kind of excessively blotchy. I don't know about you guys, but I know there was a time in my painting and drawing when I would look at these smudges and just get really frustrated. Because <laughs> like, ah, oh, it's, it's not that nice clean paper. But um, I couldn't live with that much more. So I, I said, I need to change my thinking a little bit and kind of embrace the messiness. Um, and I'm really glad I did and help me relax a little bit more. No longer chastising myself for um, kind of smudging, instead trying to go with it. All right, so I do want to. I need to, to bring out more of the lights in that background. So that's what I'm kind of working on now. So again, starting with a really light pressure to see what lifts naturally. And lean in when I when I need to. So if there's a dark spot, just kind of apply a little bit of pressure, try to feather it out. Try to smooth that out a little bit, and I can I can subtract a little bit from this background mountain to indicate the the foreground one or the the one that's in advanced in front of it. Ooh, I'm just noticing in that that town in the distance there are these little lights that are catching the building. So I'm gonna in, try to indicate that through these shapes, um, kind of rectangular shapes of light. And then there's also there's the the water line here. There's light catching on the ripples behind there, so I can use the eraser to, to kind of indicate that light. And there's also these the darker edges of the, the waves that I can drop in there. Okay, so and then there's also kind of more light back behind here. So just kind of lightly dragging with the kneaded eraser to lift off there. Um, see if I can actually bring out that highlight a little bit more right here. Um, so if I do that, Might need to reestablish some of those other marks that are just kind of removing, but I think I need to lighten this whole area. So don't be afraid to, to lose an edge and then reestablish it. So like I said, I lost that edge there, but I can sharpen that up. I can bring back more of that edge quality to pop that forward. Just keep working those edges. I'm still not, I'm not happy with that shape. Um, so I'm gonna cut this back a little bit more. 
something that's really taken from you know the, the painting process. Again, this is very similar to how I would attack this as a painting. You know, you're building, you're kind of sculpting with the uh, the material. Now, it's, it's interesting. It brings back, it brings to mind that conversation I had last night with Matthew Baird, the um, the you know the realist, the hyper realist watercolor artist, and you know with you know there are certain things that you know, they're challenging to do with watercolor that, you know, like being able to subtract like this. Um, and so this, you know, depending on your objectives as an artist, this may not be the, the way to go. Yeah, just kind of lifting. This is a lot of kind of fine tuning at this point, like, kind of nitpicky, but I kind of think it, it needs that to make it feel like it's a finished drawing. And this is just a, a great way to learn about you know, how to control gradations and light. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, when you, when you hear sailboat as a subject, what you might anticipate as the, the ultimate challenge. But, you know, it ends up, you know, in this scene, it really ends up being about the light. The sailboat just happens to be in it, right? But the, the subject is, seems to be the light. And I do want to kind of smooth out these areas a little bit. So now, in this case, I'm just kind of targeting the light areas, applying a little bit more pressure, and feathering it out a little bit. There's some uneven qualities to the paper. That's all right. And I think I need to lift a little bit more light down in here. And then for sure over here, there's this kind of triangle of that sky being reflected in the water there. And so I'm just kind of lifting kind of around the boat I'm, and I'm trying to kind of be mindful of the overall composition, all right? So, um, you know, thinking about the edges, the way the shapes are, um, kind of exiting the composition, and to break up those edges, but I don't want to have too much contrast here. I want the contrast to be isolated there. There's a little bit of light on that hillside that I think we could indicate. Didn't really get that shape right. I feel like that's important. Because it's that, it's that contrast there. There we go. All right, so I'm going to come back in on this and advance this front edge of the sail a little bit more. All right, well, I'm, I'm glad that you liked that Illuminate event yesterday, Nia. I saw you in there. I saw quite a few of you in that event. Those are going to be fun. So we just talked with the next artist for that series, uh, the February artist. Um, I should also say that, you know, we'll be launching a new podcast. Artist podcast will be coming out in February. So I'll be the host for that. Um, and that, that builds on the, the Illuminate series. So if, you, if you're curious about the conversation, um, a good portion of the Illuminate event last night will be in that in um, that episode of the podcast that will be coming out in uh, February. And so you can hear it in an interview with Matthew Bird. And then the, but there's a demo portion that was also included that um, that viewers, that members can access. Adding a little bit of these kind of lines here for the 
for the ripples in the water. these kind of reflections in there a little bit better. Actually, I think I need to kind of refine this a little bit more. You have a little bit more structure to the reflection. So again, as I'm doing the reflection and keeping an eye on the shape of the sail above it, Make sure at least I'm in the, the ballpark. And then since I lighten that area, I need to do that in the reflection as well. And this is where I can be using the larger reference image. Um, and since I have the overall composition established and the proportions roughed in, um, you know, I can, I can kind of be absorbed in those details now in a way that I, I couldn't really do earlier on in the drawing process. I think we're just about done here. You know, I can continue to kind of adjust this, but I don't know as if I can really show anything that you haven't seen already. So um, I think we're, really what I'm going to be doing is just continue to tweak and adjust this. So I hope this has been helpful. It's been a lot of fun. I really needed this drawing today. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I need it every week, but um, it's definitely something I look forward to every week is, is drawing with you all. Um, so I hope, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and kind of picked up something. Again, the, the whole objective of the series is to you know, we just set aside some time to draw and challenge ourselves and hopefully come away with something that, that, you know, helps us advance our understanding of the drawing process or new technique, a new approach, you know, something that we can take into another medium like watercolors or oils. Who knows? But, you know, we just keep trying to push things, try to improve. Um, this Actually, I think that's what's kind of throwing me off is this blob is too big. Um, but we do this every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, I encourage you to check out artistnetwork.com. You'll find a link to this episode page in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Um, if you're interested in checking out my book, it's on Amazon. There's a link in the description below. It's called See, Think, Draw. And it's built on a lot of the processes and things that, we, that we've done throughout this series here. Um, you know, if you are curious about the Illuminate events, uh, you know, check out membership. Um, it's, you have access to our video library as well as, you know, the magazine, Artist Magazine, um, and other features in Artist Network. Um, we're going to be releasing some cool new um, community features in the coming months that I'm really excited about that I'm hoping that we can use to extend our conversation from here onto the website and engage more with that. Um, so... Thank you all. Thank you all for being patient with this. This has been an interesting one. It, I don't know. I could keep tweaking this all day long. Um, I don't know, quite know how I feel about it, but I guess I suppose it turned out okay. I think what I want to do is sharpen this just a little bit. Give some structure to the guy sitting back there, or woman, person. Oh, I totally forgot that life ring back there. 
There we go. Drop some suggestion of that in there. So, but whew, I'm kind of burnt out for today. <laughs> So thank you all so much. This has been a lot of fun. If you are new, I welcome you. Hopefully you'll join us next week. If you do want to look at any of the old episodes, this is episode 129. So there's 128 other episodes on an Artist Network, our YouTube channel. So you can find that playlist and check them all out. So like and subscribe, do all of that fun stuff so you know when the next event is coming. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Have a fantastic weekend. <laughs>